Hello and welcome back to Miniverse. I'm Rhys and today we are building a Warhammer 40,000 diorama. Now I watch a lot of YouTube, especially a lot of Warhammer stuff. So I thought there'd be no other series to try out some new techniques than of course making an epic fight scene between some Necrons and the fearsome Space Marines. Now I wanted this diorama to use some cool LED filaments, which meant I had to make the base myself. Now having no previous handiwork experience, this is actually a lot of fun, and I might do this more often in the future. Meanwhile, I thought it'd be a great time to go on a hunt for some natural materials. On my walk, I found a fallen tree and decided to harvest some of its sweet, sweet roots. Alongside roots, twigs and moss are great resources to have for your diorama collection. So to quickly recap, I made the base of the diorama out of some wood and I then cut out some acrylic to the size of the diorama I wanted to add some support and function for later on. Now let's build some stuff. I found an old Primaris captain from the Imperium magazine and decided to scrape off the Ultramarine logos and retrofit his shooting arm with some green stuff to make it look more natural. After that, it was time to continue building the diorama. After applying the hot glue, I placed the XPS foam onto the diorama. Now recently, as in right now, I've stopped cutting my XPS foam exactly to size as I find it much easier to make it that little bit bigger and then cut around the sides with a hot wire cutter as it works so much better. So I started cutting into the foam to get a general woodland theme going on. I usually recommend planning everything you want to do beforehand, but hey, sometimes it's just more fun to go at it and fix the problems when they come. But trust me, they'll come. Now it was time to start sculpting the specific scenery I wanted. I knew I wanted a dried up stream going through the middle of the diorama, so I miniputted the sides to get smoother and more natural layout with some rocks added in. Oh yeah, and remember when I said that problems would come? Well, they came. The resin mould I made didn't fit properly, so I had to cut up some more foam, remove bits here and there, and add a hell of a lot more milliput. Thankfully, in the end, it looked pretty good. Now it's time for the basing. Like any sane person, let's fry up some dirt and make some terrain paste. Unlike my last Warhammer diorama, link above, I didn't sift through all the dirt and left all its natural goodness to create some more depth in the ground, creating that old dried up forest feel. To do this, I mixed up water, Mod Podge, and brown paint in equal quantities and started slapping it all over the diorama. Remember that walk I had earlier? Well, it's time to show the fruits of the harvest. It was time to wash and bake all the tree roots that I collected. I did this twice, baking at a good heat for about an hour each time, after washing them to make sure there was no filth on my precious roots. Finding and placing each of the roots was actually a lot of fun in itself. It was kind of like playing a little side quest from the main game. 
And if you think this diorama looks like a right mess, well, you're right. But don't worry, after a good bit of spray paint, it'll start looking right as rain. So let's paint that space marine. I chose to paint it resembling something similar to the Blood Angels colour scheme and started spraying the model white and airbrushing all the undersides a light brown for some contrast. Once it was dry I coated that bad boy in some Vallejo red ink to give him that shiny armour. Now it's time to take away that shine and coat him in some enamel brown wash. So it's time to grab some cotton wool buds and Winsor Newton and start removing all the wash from the raised surfaces. <laughs> now come on, that's pretty satisfying. I then painted his sword, a sword cutter, and layered up his cape to a blue, and added all the gold accessories around his armour. And in certain areas, I added more brown wash, and removed it using the same technique as before. Next, I primed the diorama and started to paint it. But first, let's talk about this intense wood. Either I shook it wrong, but let's be honest, that's not a wood colour, that's yellow. So after that kerfuffle, I whacked out some contrast paints and painted the rest of the base brown. Now it's time to come up with a colour scheme for the diorama. I wanted something quite muted, maybe a bit grim dark, something that doesn't have too much contrast or brightness to it. So I opted to use very similar colours like beige, browns, greens and murky greys. And hey, if you're enjoying this video, let me know what you want to see me do next. So make sure to comment that below and make sure to subscribe to actually see what I do next.
So let's move on to the antagonist of the scene, the Necrons. For the Necrons, I didn't want some shiny, fancy, new looking robotic armor. I wanted some old, rustic looking Necrons. I wanted to make it look like they've been trapped on this planet for a millennia. So let's come back to the diorama and glue some of the models down before adding some cool LED filaments. As this was my first time ever soldering, I did a lot of it off camera, but this is all inspired by Boilai Hobby Time, which I'll leave his channel down below and make sure to watch his videos as he demonstrates it much better than I could in how to actually do these type of LED filaments. But hey, maybe in a future episode, I'll show you more in depth than how I did it. final shot to the diorama. Let me know what you think and I look forward to hearing it down below in the comments. Make sure to subscribe and come back next time where we're going to try and build something even cooler and better. I've been Reese, and I'll catch you next time.